Sutin and start with the Hat Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time from the Lord of the Soli, the Master of Vultures, and Rajgura, together with the great community of monks and the great community of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Lord was absorbed in concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound deception. Also, at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the time, perfection of wisdom, and beheld those five high gates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the devil Shri Putra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara. How should any son of the lineage be in the visions of heart as the activity of the divine perfection of wisdom? He said that in the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara. Said this to the venerable Shri Putra. Shri Putra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom. Should look on a point of like doing this correctly and repeatedly before in those five and it gets also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form, emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling discrimination, composition of factors and consciousness are empty. Sherry Putra, likewise, all phenomena are empty and yes, without characteristics. And to do consists and is not without staying, is not efficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no composition, no practice, no consciousness. No eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element in soul, after including no mind element, no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extension of ignorance and so on after you including no aging and death, no extension of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation of harm. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, the suffers rely on the divine perfection of wisdom. The mind without obscuration and without fear, having completely passed beyond error, the region and the point of harm. All the Buddhas that dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awakened to unsurpassable, perfect, and believe in life and perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the mantra of past mantra, the mantra of equal to deny equal, the mantra of the thought that pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth and this is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Tayata, Om Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasambate, Bodhisattva. Shari Putra, the Bodhisattva, Masaka, to train the divine perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan and Rosunda concentration and command the Bodhisattva, Masaka, Arya, Avishvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the divine perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated, even if the Tayatas rejoice. I prostrate to gathering of the kings in the three chakras who abide in the holy yoga of using space. By your powers of clairvoyance and magical emanation, look after practitioners like a mother of a child. I by the teachings of the three supreme jewels possessing the power, may inner and outer humanities be transformed, may they be expelled, may they be exacted. May all negative forces opposed to Dharma be completely pacified. May the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified. May we be separated from problems and harm and conditions to the Dharma. May all enjoyments be equal to the Dharma. And may there be the auspiciousness and perfect happiness here right now. Bring a mandala.
Right, so we're going to offer the tea, just for the crack. Just a thought of starting off with um, saying something brief. Um, says that it's a bit pointless, but he's going to say it anyway. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gesha said that I, you know, in walking sometimes here and there on the way up to his house, um, he thought to himself one day, just kind of 
I guess that in English you would say day, daydreaming, that one day he would find on the path a Buddha statue or uh, made of stone or maybe Lama Tsongkhapa statue made of stone. Geshe said that, you know, of course, this is something that is quite impossible. Um, he's no a high level practitioner, he's not a scholar. So just to kind of um, randomly come by something like that, you know, to be just present in, in front of you, is not something that could happen just like that. So this is something that, of course, it's impossible to happen. And yet Geshe said that still he hopes that one day it will happen. You know, there's no, in some sense, there's no point of actually mentioning that. But Geshe thought that since he's here, you know, sitting here in front of us, why not give it a go? <laughs> ジェソンスレンジジェソンアンデンディカンデスティングやティンチョイデンチキディジディジャロラヤアンデンディジトゥデジャロンデンカンデスコレンディンパラパディンデストゥパドンスンドンマジソンスンドンマジナディキオモ
um, he found this stone. And um, if you really, um, it's not a statue, so to speak, but if you look at it in a particular way, it has the outline of a statue. Did that you can show the truth? The Teba one is Sandy John Delia. She in the Teba to say that Kavi should do us. And the Jamal Mutungo Chimu, the Tejinki, the Nayana, Jin Sin Timmy Tommy, the Teba de Menaya, Lomong Rinayang, and no soon just pass using the yard. Nan Chu Jamal Tin, Nil Teba de Shu Chimu Shoot, Child, Yasa Yakama. So, so Geshe said that thinking about it, um, it is connected with faith. Geshe said that you cannot claim that it is an informed faith. And still, no, no, it's not the one that um, you develop through valid cognitioning, that is, uh, valid cognition, sorry, that is supported by reason. And still, having studied for more than 30 years, Krishna said that he has developed faith in um, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and Lama Tsumkapa, and through that, you can receive their blessings. <laughs> So we have faith and trust in the Buddhas, in, um, in the Indian Pandits. We have trust between one another. And with trusting each other, we can accomplish different things. Without which, without trust that we have in each other, we won't be able to accomplish much. <laughs> え、So we have inaugurated the Nalinda Master Garden on Monday. We also celebrated His Honest Dalai Lama's 85th birthday. We also then commemorated the teachings of Lama Tsongkhapa. Um, so that also is in some sense showing us the way to move forward to the future. Um, so we are currently experiencing that situation where many of the Lamas being in India, elsewhere, Tibet, and, and, and elsewhere cannot travel here to Australia and meet us or we cannot meet them in person and yet still we can receive teachings from them so this is 
we can look at, for example, what happened on Monday. We have just recently looked at um, the practice of the seven limb prayers in the context of chapter number two and three from Chanti Deva's Guide to Bodhisattva Way of Life. Yeah? Of the seven limbs, one of them is the request to turn the will of Dharma. So thinking of how we made a simple request to Kyabja Lama Sopa Rinpoche to um, come online for um, the inauguration of the garden and for the consecration of the um, garden and statues. And that was arranged in such an easy and swift manner. Kyabja Lama Sopa Rinpoche agreed to do it since immediately. So this is an indication, Geshla reckons, that our uh, practice of the seven limbs and so forth is working to the point where even though our lamas cannot travel here or we cannot go and meet them in person, still things like that are available to us. And in the future, Geshla reckons that if we make again requests to Kyabja Lama Sopa um, it is likely that um, such requests will be easily granted. Without making such requests to teach us to Dhamma, no one will teach us to Dhamma. You know, the, um, this is something that is in line with the Buddhist tradition, not teaching while not being requested to do that. So we can make plans. We can make plans for the future and also make requests for teachings to be given to us in the future. And Geshe reckons that if you, if we make such requests again in the future to Kyabja Lama Sopa Rinpoche, they will definitely be answered. In that, choosing between um, Rinpoche doing his prayers or teaching us, giving advice to students, Geshe reckons that Lama Sopa Rinpoche would be more happy in teaching others. Uh, working um, in that sense solely for the welfare of others. Lamas like Lama Sopa Rinpoche are interested solely in being of benefit to others. So we can make such plans for the future. Like for example, in December, we don't have many activities planned. So you know, this is something that we can maybe plan for December, make requests for something to happen in December. <laughs> So it is possible to accomplish that in this place, in this, cent in this center. It will definitely bring about benefit to this place, to this country, and also to a center. So this is something that we can include in our 
future planning for activities. So we have inaugurated the Nalenda Master Garden with the array of statues. And Geshla reckons that that is also something that we can well advertise in, in a sense that when people come up and see those statues, the Buddha statue, the Pandita statues, Naman Sumkapa statues, it definitely creates imprints in the mind stream. It leaves imprints of virtues in the mind, of virtue in the mind stream, and this is beneficial for others. So, um, Gesta reckons that if we um, prepare a presentation or a material well, then that could um, contribute to other people receiving the blessings of the Buddha and the Nalanda masters. <laughs> So we have people that come to visit us here at Chimrezik Institute and even if they are non-Buddhist, even if they have no, um, no knowledge of the Buddhist tradition, simply coming across such statues, Geshe so that people are still kind of inspired or they're still happy, you know, even if they don't put the palms together in, as a token of respect or veneration of those masters, still Geshe so that some people kind of are impressed and they're putting a hand on the heart or the chest, which is, Geshe said that it is a sign of still having joy or liking um, this garden, which is something that is connected with faith. So if you develop joy, if you develop a sense of um, liking, something like that, it will bring up faith, it will turn to faith in the future. So even if you don't have knowledge or understanding of the Dhamma, through coming across things like that, in the future, faith can arise. And <laughs> So we have accomplished that successfully. Now, from time to time, we can go down to the garden, do circumambulation, recitation. You can do it by yourself, right? So do some koras or circumambulation, recite the verse mixima, recite some mantras and so forth. And also, if you see that the statues are dirty, then you can also clean them. They are out in the open, so sometimes birds poo on them. Um, leaving it like that without cleaning it is not really good. And if we completely let the statues, um, neglect the statues, not clean them and so forth, it might get to the point where others that will come to the center will see the situation of the statue and will think, they would think that we're not really take, taking good care of the things that we have here at the center. They will ridicule us in that sense. So it's good also to continue to take care of that. <laughs> also, we had a brief ceremony where um, we thanked the donors and the sponsors, people that um, not only have offered um, money towards the garden, but also people that have um, offered the time and um, 
effort and work. Um, also, Venable Turkey um, was offered a statue. <laughs> and then towards the end, Gesha saw that he's running out of statues. So he reclaimed the statue <laughs> from, <laughs> from Turkey and gave it to someone else. So <laughs> Turkey, like, don't worry about it. Gesha is promising to replenish that. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Gesha yesterday went down to Gun to the art studio to get another one, but it was already locked, so <laughs> it's still on the cards, Tricky. Don't get angry. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Kanda Dana Kasseram, Jandan Leba Chebong, Tijan Chebber, on your own, Tamji Chanjuka Dingus. Anyway, let's go back to the text and pick up from where we left off yesterday. So, just before we do that, I just um, um, want to remind people that we, um, we have something planned today. We have something planned for today. and. There will be no discussion group afternoon. We apologize for that. Yeah. All right. So um, we're going to pick up from verse 16. Le looking at the outline, we're training in the mind that gives away body material wealth and roots of virtue. We've started a second point, aspiring for virtue to become a cause that does not go to waste. And we're going to pick up from verse 16 that comes under the heading of aspiring for virtue to act as a cause, preventing such thoughts from going to waste. Um, it says in verse 16, whether a mind of anger or faith arises directed at me may it become the cause for all their purposes to be continually fulfilled. Tilda, <laughs> え、けん、カンテチチェバイネヤ。あに、タンジチャンジュランテ。え、ケルトセディ。ヤチャジャタンバ。え、ユングヨサレス。ピンザ。ナンジュツォディ。あに、デネマチュンジュナンのムノヤ
we might think that I have no power whatsoever to put it into practice like that. So if we think that it is impossible for us to do it, I cannot do it, it is a personal indication to us that our practice hasn't matured yet. No, that it's not, hasn't reached that market. We can assess that based upon a personal experience, right? We know what we're capable and, and not. So if we look at our own experience and we think that that is impossible to do, that's an indication of, um, our, um, of the level of the practice that we have developed or the one that we are still missing. 예, 간지, 너도 참으로 용이하게, 시작하고, 에, 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 and the cover the Dembachi, Tung Togumaras, or denouncing that you seem generally in my name, and in Ninji, Ninji Katsuki, Shukchen, Ninji Yamle, or Titsuki, and Sunjan Kantaji the Tunaya, Sosole, Nian Tatuichi, Jasa Jadam, Yarmuji Tuta Sungo, the thing on the sound domain, D. Pok Tuyaduchi, Red was right. So we develop compassion at the root for all sentient beings. Our compassion extends to a certain degree. Also the trust and the faith that we have in the lamas, the virtuous friends, also extends to a certain degree. If we see only faults in our lamas, in our spiritual um, teachers, it's an indication of our lack of fortune as students or disciples. If our compassion reached a certain degree, then we can see others with a sense of affection. We can feel that close, closeness to others as soon as we encounter them. So this is something that we can assess. And this is also something that His Honest and Dalai Lama has said before. You know, through compassion, the goal is to see others as being close to your heart. As soon as you encounter someone, you have the sense of closeness and that comes through Having developed compassion. And the time you said the Teva Yovena and the Dodo do Chinjun Jirava in the head, such as Zinga Jimudas Rata D. The Tuzu each the Teva Ralegos. So, have if you have trust, if you have um, faith, then even a small piece of stone can, for you, all of a sudden, appear in a particular <laughs> way. Now, this is just a kind of a, just a trivial. Example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is something that is also possible with respect to the lamas, the virtuous friends, right? So then looking at the commentary, regardless of whether it is a mind of anger or faith that has risen directed at me, may it become a cause in, um, that in all lifetimes, all the temporary and ultimate aims are achieved. So we can combine that with making prayers, making supplications to the lamas and the virtuous friends so that that may come to pass. So then the next verse 
is dedicating the action as the cause for inexhaustibility. May whoever affronts me, harms me otherwise, or backstabs me, backstabs me, have the fortune of enlightenment. May whoever affronts me verbally or otherwise physically harms me or backstabs me, may all these actions become the cause for, for them to have the fortune of attaining the great enlightenment. Now next is dedicating it to be the cause of enjoyment. So let's look at the outline. It says, um, aspiring for virtue to become a cause for um, material um, resources, body, etc. We have three points, aspiring for, for you yourself to act as a cause providing all the necessities of others, then aspiring for more expensive times and functions, ex sorry, extensive times and functions, and aspiring for no discontinuity in object and time. Let's begin with verse 18 that comes, 18, 19, 20, that come under the heading of aspiring for you yourself to act as a cause providing all, <coughs> Sorry, all the necessities of others. It says, first of all, in verse 18, may I become a protector for the unprotected, a guide for those traveling along the path, a ship, ferry, or, or bridge for those that want to cross. <laughs> The commentary to that is quite clear. It says, may I become a protector for those without protector. In our lives, a guide for travelings on the path. A ship ferrying a bridge for those wishing to cross water. So we make such aspirational prayers and we do them to our best ability. And if you think that I'm making these prayers, but in an actual fact, I cannot really be, be a sheep, cannot be a fairy and so forth. So I can't really do that. Still, the, important, the, the importance um, in making those prayers is to do them as genuinely as you can, sincerely as you can. And if you do it with a genuine attitude, then should there come a time in which you encounter a certain situation, and you can do something in order to protect someone. So may I be a protector for those who need a protector. So if you can protect others due to having made such aspirations before, you will do whatever you can in order to protect that person. And as such, you'd be a genuine practitioner of the Gato Bodhisattva way of life. So we might not be able to give a very in-depth presentation explanation of the three refuges or the four truths. We might be able to just give um, an explanation that will just be glancing, you know, just kind of touching upon the um, course points of the three refuges or the four truths. But in being genuine with our 
wish to be of benefit to others, if we give an explanation to others with a sense of sincerity, then that would be giving protections to those who seek protection, being a protector for those who would look for a protection. And <laughs> So you can be a protector for those who lack protection. You can then be a guide along the path that proceeds to liberation in the state of enlightenment. And even if, you, even if your ability to guide someone is still quite, um, quite small, still comparatively, in a relative way, you're still acting as a guide for along the path that proceeds to the state of liberation in enlightenment. So it's important to still continue to train in the development of faith and trust, to repeatedly think of what we need to take up and what we need to cast aside in relation to the four truths, and through repeatedly thinking about them, through training in trust and faith, then we can increase our ability to explain them to others should they seek an, um, an explanation of those topics. Geshe Santa says that although when he has conversations with people, although his level of English is quite poor, still insists in emphasizing that, insists on emphasizing that if we give an explanation to people that come from the same backgrounds, having the same language or same um, cultural conditioning, then our ability to um, help them or to influence them is greater. So through that, they can acquire trust and faith. So as verse 18 says, may I become a protector for those without protector. In our lives, a guide for travelers on their paths a ship, ferry, and bridge for those wishing to cross waters. The next, he says, may I become an island for those wishing an island, a place of rest for those, those that wish to rest. A slave for all embodied beings who desire a slave. Sorry? Oh yeah, maybe there is a line missing from this. Just a second. It's in there. Did I miss something? Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's look at the other translation, the FM, the FMT translation. No, it's okay, it's okay. Um, all right, so the FMT translation says, May I be an island for those who seek one, and a lamp for those who desire, desiring one. May I be a bed for all who desire one, and a slave for all who want an embodied slave. Thanks. So 
ဒါဆိုစလိုရင်တို့ကိုရမတိနေရမှာဘုရားဒီဆိုလိုရာပဲမှာစဝတ်တွေနေမြောပိုက်ရဲ့ဆိုတော့ကြီးအနေအာစိ
or in a poor position, you can still see yourself as being a servant to others and seeing the equality between yourself and others and help others in whatever way you can. Which is also an attitude that Gabriel Lama Sovereign Pache spoke of a couple of days ago when he quoted um, those verses from A Praise to Bodhicitta by Kunulama. He says that if you want to be, if you want to um, take the burden of all, cultivate Bodhicitta. If you want to be equal to all, cultivate Bodhicitta. If you want to be appreciated or respected by all, cultivate Bodhicitta. And <laughs> So the training in bodhicitta is not to withdraw, stay at home where you don't meet anyone and just meditate on bodhicitta. It is to directly interact with others, to work with others. Even when you work with those who are in a lesser position, a lower position than you, then you work with them together on the basis of recognizing the equality between yourself and others. So you become active in directly interacting with others. So, in India, for example, um, the caste system is still um, um, practice or um, how do you say? The caste system still exists in um, big portions in Indian society. And um, His Honest the Dalai Lama, for example, when in one of his visits to Ladakh, where also there are certain areas in Ladakh where the caste is still, system is still regarded, and those that belong to a lower caste are um, shunned to the extremities of um, certain places. His Honest invited uh, people from a lower caste um, inside a teaching venue. Um, he shared food with them. First of all, food was served to them. And then after they um, started eating food, and his owners reached you know, to their portions and ate with them. So we do whatever we can for the benefit and happiness of others. And when we do that, that's the practice of bodhisattvas. Continuing with the next verse, man become, oh, well, we read through verse 19. So the commentary says, may become a dry land for those that wish for an island, a land for those that desire a lamp, a resting place for those that desire to rest, and a slave for those that desire a slave. <laughs> The next verse reads, May I become a wish fulfilling jewel, a pure vase, a knowledge mantra or a powerful medicine, a wish fulfilling tree or cow for embodied beings. <laughs>
May I become a knowledge mantra accomplishing the actions of pacifying, increasing, and so forth. For those wishing to achieve those actions, medicine taking the essence that dispels all sickness. A wish fulfilling tree that gives what is desired, such as food and drink, and a wish fulfilling cow that can give whatever is desired by embodied beings. Dedicated in such a way repeatedly. <laughs> Then the next section dedicating for time and expenses like the elements of earth and so forth and like space as well may always be the basis for many for the many necessities of the boundless sentient beings. So re we read those verses and if a mind is not affected by the mind of enlightenment and compassion, it's hard to turn them to a heartfelt aspiration, right? But Geshe So is honest, the Dalai Lama, reading through those verses and becoming teary quite a few times. So guess the mark this verse in his text. Now he's always honest, becoming quite teary and emotional. Um, in relation to this verse. And he said that this is something that, just I thought of himself at the time, that this is something that I need to think of. Why is it that I'm still unaffected by the words of this verse, whereas his honest becomes really inspired and affected by this verse? So when you think about it, it can be indicative of how your practice of compassion and the mind of enlightenment hasn't reached a certain level to the point in which you allow that to be a heartfelt aspiration <laughs> So there might be an opportunity for you to work for the benefit and, um, and happiness of others. And if you don't seize that opportunity, it is, it is an indication that you might be saying the words, but it is just lip service, just lip service. Whereas if you do come across an opportunity to be of benefit to others, you work for the benefit and well-being, even without reciting those exact words, you're a true practitioner of the meaning of these words. <laughs>
The commentary says, may I become, may I always become in many ways to cause for the necessities of the boundless sentient beings, like the four elements of earth, water, fire, and wind that are the basis for the actions of sentient beings, and similar to space, which is permanent. From the stacking of jewels, Bodhisattvas work for the welfare of sentient beings, like the five elements. Then, good, good signals, though, good signals, Chancho Semp and John Lanter, Simjing Kenche or Sumataros. The Chancho Semp and Sugi, John Lanter is long, the such men on John Shigan, Nanka Jarchin, and D. the Chick Tutat, and a Jigden Kamdalia, Nede, and John Lanter Nanka Chagoras. Then Nanshing and Suzuki Tetia, and a John Lanter Nation, and a Simjan and Pindy Jungi, and when it says in the stacking of jewels, Bodhisattvas work for the welfare of sentient beings like the five elements. These are the five elements of earth, water, fire, wind, and space. So just like the world or the universe exists in being supported on the elements, so do we aspire to um, be a support for sentient beings. So we wish to work for the benefit and welfare of sentient beings just like the elements um, facilitate the existence of the world. And next verse, Number 22 comes out of the heading of dedicating for uninterrupted continuum of object and time. Likewise, may be the cause for the livelihood of all the realms of sentient beings that stretch until the edge of space, until they all go beyond misery. <laughs> The commentary to this section reads, Likewise, may I, all, may I also become the cause for the livelihood of all the realms of sentient beings, which extend to the age of space, by benefiting them in infinite ways until they go beyond misery. Trying it in mind like, like this again and again. The <laughs> Some <laughs> So we have now completed the section that um, explains the preparation for training in Bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment. Tomorrow we will look at the verses in chapter number three that explain in the actual the actual training in Bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment. So from today till tomorrow, till we cover those verses, Geshe is asking you to. Um, continue to go back again and again to verses 21 and 22. Like the elements of earth and so forth, and like space as well, may always be the basis for the many necessities of the boundless sentient beings. Likewise, may be the cause for, li for the livelihood of all the realms of sentient beings that stretch until the edge of space until they all go beyond misery. And also, think about it and think about how um, to what degree it affects your mind. If you find that you do not get inspired by those verses like His Honest does in 
um, your, the, the hair on your body is standing on end and tears flowing down, then think of why is it so? It is so because we haven't developed yet a fully mature level of compassion in the mind of enlightenment. And if this is the case, then think about it from different perspectives in all ways. Think about the way to develop compassion from different perspectives so that your mind will be better prepared for those verses tomorrow. Is there a good and <laughs> So we'll leave the session here for now. Um, today, actually quite soon, uh, we're going to have some prayer gathering for the sake of Poonam's mom um, that passed away 49 days ago. So today is the 49th day. Um, we did a similar thing for the sake of Johnson a few days ago. And Gesha thought that it's a good way of taking care of um, people in our community. So we um, seek to be of benefit and aid to others, but we also start with those who are close to us. So we also thought that it's good to do those things again and again for us as talking of um, working for the sake of um, others. So what the way that we can be of benefit to others is to say prayers on their behalf. If there is a need to come together and do a puja together. Um, so we're going to do it today for the sake of Puna's mom. Um, we're going to do about 10, 15 minutes of prayers. Then um, they're going to offer lunch to us. So maybe let's leave it here for now and get ready for the whole thing. So let's say the dedication prayers. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're not going to say the dedication prayers now. We're going to hold off um, and do, it, do them together with Punam. So I'm um, just going to remind the people at home, we don't have a discussion group this afternoon because we have some other activities that came in between, but we still have the two tutorial at three o'clock. So see you soon. All right. So Shannon, I see a question. Maybe um, keep it for tomorrow, and we'll, I'll ask Keshla tomorrow in his class. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Is that slave is it seeking to help others in worldly sense, spending time with the worldly affairs, or is there more emphasis on guiding them through the Dharma? Dila, Chendo is Dila. Mm -hmm. All right, so Shannon, Shannon Geshla will um, answer that tomorrow. So See you soon, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Right. Thank you. Bye. All right. Cool. Thank All you. All right. Thank you.